Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Rome's Sunken City of Sin There was once a place in ancient Rome that was kind of like a modern-day version of Las Vegas. It was Rome's very own Sin City, located in southern Italy. Its real name was Baie, and archaeologists say it was a playground where elite Romans frolicked in the most sinful ways imaginable. Rich and powerful people from Rome's highest echelons built luxurious villas and had hedonistic parties. They celebrated life while the rest of the empire's peasants were struggling just to survive. Some of the famous visitors of Rome's Las Vegas included Julius Caesar, Emperor Nero, and Emperor Hadrian, and that's just to name a few. Famous Roman philosopher Seneca once described the city as a resort of vice and a place to be avoided. But don't worry, Rome's playground of perversities and partying didn't last forever. Baie was built at the very edge of the Gulf of Pozzuoli. One day, out of nowhere, a volcano rumbled, and Baie was sucked into the ocean. The whole city sank, leaving its ruins submerged under dozens of feet of water. The discovery of the sunken city was one of the most important in modern archaeology. Most recently, marine archaeologists found a sunken temple not far from the site of Baie. The temple was dated to be about 2,000 years old. It appears to be connected to the Nabataean merchants of the Jordanian desert, the residents of Petra. It looks like the merchants who brought goods from faraway lands built a small temple here for themselves, to pay respect to their own gods while they were away on business. And now for number 9. But first, I wanted to say a huge shout out to Roger from RSD on Call. Thank you so much for the super thanks. It really means a lot, and we appreciate you. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the Origins Explained family, because why not? Number 9. Ancient Booby Traps Emperor Qin Shi Huang was born in 259 BC and fought his way to becoming the most important ruler in Chinese history. He unified China under a single banner, commissioned the Great Wall of China, and even gave the country its name. China as a word comes from Qin, spelled Q-I-N but pronounced like Qin. Because of his incredible prestige, it's no surprise he has one of the most impressive tombs in the world. After the emperor's death in 210 BC, he was buried in a vast underground crypt with an entire army of terracotta warriors to protect him in the afterlife. Over 8,000 terracotta warriors to be exact, with the tomb originally found by accident in 1974 by a rural farmer. We're not here to talk about the discovery of the tomb itself, but rather something that might still be hidden inside. Legends from thousands of years ago speak of booby traps hidden throughout the emperor's tomb. Things like poison gas, tripwire alarms, and hair-trigger crossbows. Here's what a lot of people don't realize about the tomb. The emperor's grave has never even been exhumed. Unlike the Egyptian tombs that are so greedily dug up and the coffins cracked open, Qin Shi Huang remains at peace. The tomb complex is about 3.9 square miles that we know of, entirely underground, but only a small percentage has been explored. Ancient historians wrote tales of automatic crossbows to shoot trespassers, rivers of mercury to poison unsuspecting tomb raiders, and other deadly traps. The Chinese government has continued to preserve the tomb itself, and there is no way they will allow his tomb to be opened. So we might not ever know if the booby traps are real. Number 8. The Woman on the Warship a U.S. military laboratory has just helped scientists in Sweden confirm the identity of a woman who died aboard a warship in the 17th century. The ship is called the Vasa, and it was raised from its watery grave in 1961. It spent about 300 years submerged in the Stockholm harbor. When it first left port in 1628, it tipped over and sank. This was one of the most disastrous maiden voyages in seafaring history. As soon as the ship was put in the water, it keeled over. Thirty people died, their names lost to history, and their skeletons scattered across the bottom of the harbor. When scientists finally had the technology to begin investigating the Vasa, they found the hip bone of a woman known only as G. The presence of a woman shocked historians because women were not typically part of a ship's crew in the 17th century Swedish Navy. 
but they could occasionally be brought as guests. Some seamen were allowed to take their wives with them to stave off the crippling loneliness of a long journey. Since 2004, the Vasa Museum has been working with scientists to uncover the identities of all the deceased on the ship. And although they believe G to be a woman, they were never able to 100% verify it. So they reached out to the Armed Forces DNA Identification Laboratory in Delaware. Scientists specializing in DNA profiling have finally confirmed that G was indeed a woman. However, nobody's been able to figure out her name or what she was doing on board the vessel when it sank. Number 7. The Silver Pharaoh At the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir, there is a very special ring on display. It is the ring of King Susanes I, also known as the Silver Pharaoh. The ring is exquisite, made from gold and precious gemstones with a cartouche that bears the name of the pharaoh. It was discovered in the ancient city of Tanis, crafted by a skilled artisan in the 21st dynasty, just about 3,000 years ago. King Susenes I ruled Egypt from about 1039 to 990 AD, with one of his most notable achievements being defending Egypt from foreign attackers. Pretty important stuff. But after his death, the pharaoh drifted into obscurity. He wasn't like Ramses II, who was celebrated over a thousand years after his death. Nobody remembered King Susenes I until French professor Pierre Monte uncovered his tomb in 1940. Even though almost nobody knows this long-dead ruler's name, his tomb was one of the most incredible ever found in Egypt. His tomb was never looted, and so it was still filled with all the treasure the pharaoh was buried with. For some unknown reason, he was buried with a king's ransom worth of silver. This is why he was called the Silver Pharaoh. If you ask just about any Egyptologist, they'll tell you the discovery of King Suseni's tomb was just as important as the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922. However, the timing was atrocious. The world was in the middle of a war, and so the discovery didn't get any coverage. Otherwise, Susenes could be as famous today as King Tut. Have you ever heard of the Silver Pharaoh? Let me know in the comments! Number 6. The Oldest Swords The site of Arslan Tepe in Turkey is nothing short of extraordinary. Up until the discovery of this place, mainstream archaeologists believed the earliest swords in the world were crafted no later than 3,600 years ago. But then, in the 1980s, archaeologist Marcella Frangipane and her team from Rome University uncovered a crumbling palace structure from about 5,000 years ago. Buried inside the structure was a small collection of swords built from an alloy of arsenic and copper. These swords, nine in total, are currently the oldest known weapons of their kind ever found. Some were inlaid with silver and decorated with very intricate designs. Some appear to be short swords, while others are a bit longer. Scientists now believe this part of Turkey was the birthplace of the sword, a weapon that would dominate warfare up until the invention of gunpowder. But the truth of the matter is a little more complicated than you might think. First of all, who even lived at Arslan Tepe 5,000 years ago? All scientists really know is that they were contemporary to the early Uruk civilization of southern Mesopotamia, who appeared about 1,000 years later. These were extremely primitive humans just starting out as a small city-state. It's unclear if the swords were used as real weapons or if they were symbolic, used in rituals, or kept as treasure. What would you do if you found an ancient sword? Let me know in the comments! Number 5. The Dwarfy Stain The Dwarfy Stain is a monument about 5,000 years old sitting in a remote valley in Scotland. It's about as far from civilization as you can get in Europe, way out on the island of Hoi, and in a barren landscape of scrub grass and ancient hills. The monument is the only thing in sight, a huge chunk of red sandstone hollowed by human hands a very long time ago. Archaeologists think it could be the only rock-cut tomb in Britain. However, this has never been confirmed. It might not be a rock-cut tomb. For all we know, it was used for some bizarre ritual in 3000 BC by Bronze Age Islanders living at the edge of existence. Whatever the case, 
it's one of the most important monuments in Britain, even if nobody has ever heard of it. There are a lot of mysteries surrounding the rock. First of all, it is incredibly large. There doesn't appear to be any realistic way that Stone Age humans cut the rock from the wall of the valley and brought it down to the center without help from some sort of advanced technology. It also doesn't seem likely that the rock fell off the cliffs and then slid all the way down the valley. The truth is that nobody really knows how the rock got where it is today, only that someone carved a deep chamber inside of it. The dwarfy stain could have been a hermit's house, a place of religious importance, or a tomb for someone whose body was removed centuries ago. We know that the tomb was sealed in the 16th century, and that at some point someone tried to chisel their way in through the roof. But there are no historical records to tell us what happened here. How do you think the dwarfy stain got where it is today? Number 4. The Nomoli Figurines The Nomoli figurines come from Sierra Leone and Liberia. These ancient carved figures were made from soapstone and granite many centuries ago. They were first seen by outsiders when Portuguese explorers arrived in this part of Africa in the 15th century. The Mende people, who are still the largest ethnic group in Sierra Leone, used Nomoli figurines as mementos, which they often placed inside the graves of the dead. They were a form of ritual protection, carved by hand and then placed somewhere like outside someone's home or inside a field of crops. The belief was that the Nomoli figurine could offer protection, could give a family good fortune, and ensure a good crop. People even consulted these statues as they would an oracle, asking them questions about the future. The thing about these figurines is that nobody knows anything about their origin. Scientists say they were first carved hundreds of years ago by a civilization that no longer exists. In fact, nothing at all exists of the ancient civilization except for these figurines. Many have been found in Sierra Leone and people are still carving them to this day. Immigrants in the 20th century brought Nomoli figurines with them to the United States to preserve their culture. And yet all these years later, nobody knows anything about the original culture. In the Middle Ages, there was a powerful kingdom in Sierra Leone, undoubtedly descendants of an even more ancient people. But all evidence of them is gone, and their memory lives on only through these strange yet magical figurines. Number 3. The Neolithic Housing Boom the first evidence of a sedentary community practicing agriculture comes from about 8,500 years ago in Turkey. Sedentary communities then began to flourish in France 7,800 years ago, followed by Britain and Ireland, and Northern Europe later about 6,000 years ago. But what's really interesting is that according to new academic studies, the spread of agriculture caused a prehistoric boom and bust in housing markets. Populations in Neolithic communities spiked during booms, then plummeted to extreme depths during busts. Professor Stephen Sheenan from the UCL Institute of Archaeology says that according to his research, 10 out of 12 early farming communities suffered from population fluctuation. This may not seem like a huge deal, but these were huge fluctuations. Stephen found that people flocked to early agricultural communities with populations quickly doubling or quadrupling in size. Many of these communities would see two huge booms, followed by a decline of about 60% of the population. The decline in population is similar to the deaths caused by the plague thousands of years later. So, what was happening with these communities? One possibility is diminishing natural resources. Huge population booms cause a reduction in forests, a decrease in materials, and strain on the newly developed agricultural systems. Many of these early communities likely suffered from sudden starvation because there were too many people and not enough food to go around. Number 2. A Roman Aristocrat Archaeologists in England have just found a hidden cemetery that dates back 1,600 years. It's being hailed as a once-in-a-lifetime find, especially because of the bodies uncovered within the graveyard. There were about 60 individuals, including men, women, and children. But one person in particular has captured the curiosity of researchers. This individual is a woman found encased in a lead coffin, who appears to have been part of Roman high society. 
She was an aristocrat, with her fancy coffin filled almost to the brim with pieces of jewelry. This was a dying custom 1,600 years ago. Within a few centuries, people would stop burying loved ones with trinkets and treasures altogether. David Hunter, the main archaeologist working on the project, says the woman's burial could help develop a better understanding of ancient Britain. The cemetery as a whole is a bit of a mixed bag. Researchers found Roman bodies and burials from the early days of the Saxons. Some people were buried with bits of pottery, others with personal possessions like knives. But the aristocratic Roman was the only woman buried with a legitimate treasure. She lived around 400 AD at the fall of the Roman Empire. This was a transitional time when power was shifting from the empire to the newly risen kingdoms of the Anglo-Saxons. It's unclear who this woman was, or how badly she fared with the collapse of Rome. Number 1. Neolithic Milk Turns out early Neolithic humans could not stomach milk. A new investigation studying skeletons from about 7,000 years ago shows that early human beings were extremely lactose intolerant. However, it seems they forced themselves to drink milk so much that we as a species rapidly evolved a tolerance to lactose. It's a bizarre discovery, and one that confirms something that scientists have long suspected. The invention of dairy farming led to human milk consumption, something they hadn't done for 300,000 years before. It shows just how amazingly fast humans can evolve. If you're lactose intolerant, don't feel bad. For most of history, milk made people sick. Lactose passed through the human stomach undigested, causing bloating, gas, and painful stomach aches. Humans suffered from this intolerance all the way until the invention of dairy farming in Europe. Mark Thomas from University College London analyzed DNA from Neolithic skeletons across Europe, confirming a sudden change in the lactase gene. It now looks like in just a handful of years, forcefully getting sick from drinking milk led to the human body learning how to digest it. You can thank ancient European farmers for your ability to eat cereal with milk in the morning without soiling your pants. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing archaeological discoveries. See you next time. Bye.